So it's 2024 and you're looking back at 2023 as a Christian and you're saying, I just wasn't the best self that I could have been last year at whatever point. Now it's 2024 and it's already filled with excuses on why we haven't been our best self yet. For me, I haven't read my Bible enough at the end of the year last year. And I haven't started this year off with reading my Bible enough. I'm lacking in the prayer department. I'm lacking in attending church because of a lot of issues that we're having at home, trying to get things taken care of that are, you know, things that we can't necessarily control, but that also affects other areas in my Christian walk. So what do you do when things are out of whack? When you're just not praying enough, you know you're not you know, carving out the time to pray, and you're not reading your Bible, and you're not attending church, and you're not even fellowshipping like you should. It's all off. The whole Christianity thing is just off. It's just a constant struggle. You just can't get it right for whatever reason. And it may be for anything. For each of us, it's different, but it's a reality. Christians go through this a lot, and... Sometimes somebody at church might have hurt your feelings. And you know what? They really may have been wrong on what they did or said. And sometimes the pastors are off. Sometimes the pastors say things from the pulpit and they make a mistake and they offend people. And really what they really said was offensive and they can't justify it. They may do whatever they can to justify it, but they hurt some people's feelings. They pump some up with it, but they hurt some's feelings, you know, and sometimes it's, it's wrong, you know. Now, you have to look at the message as a whole, you know, because pastors aren't, you know, I'm not saying pastors are always wrong. I'm saying sometimes they say the wrong thing and some or some. Sometimes it comes off the wrong way. I know specifically for me, I tend to say things wrong a lot. That's what people tell me. I have an aggressive personality. Um, I, I tend to be excited and extreme sometimes. So toning things down takes practice. It takes work. It takes effort. And I know I've done a better job with it over the years. But you also have to look at culturally where we all come from. You know, our cultural background, our family background. You know, the events of our life where we worked, you know, what were we a part of or, you, you know, what kind of job you did or didn't do, you know, your, you know, your family structure. You know, there's a lot of things that go into it. But as Christians, no matter what we are or aren't going through, we can find time to read the Bible. We can find time to pray. You can pray when you're driving. You can pray before you, you know, before you close your eyes. Actually, while you're laying down in the bed, you can say, God, I'm here laying again and I just need to talk to you. I need to discuss some things. I'm struggling with this, this, and this. I'm offended by this, this, and this. I need help with this, this, and this. God is not expecting us to be perfect. That's why he came to die for us, because he was perfect. All we have to do as Christians is put our faith and our trust and our belief in him. And he'll help us do the rest. He's the perfect one. We're not the perfect one. You know, it's his perfection that gets us through our imperfection. It's his perfection that helps us overcome our struggles. You know, I'm even staring now, right now, at my dad's Bible that's sitting on the sofa right across from me. And I have another Bible upstairs that was my dad's. And it was one that he got, you know, probably four or five months before he died. Me and him went to the bookstore and he had to get one that was in bigger print. He was having a hard time, you know, reading the other one that I'm looking at because of the small print, but he got one with bigger print. And my dad became a believer in the faith during the COVID. I mean, it really like really got close to God was during the COVID um, period where everything was shut down and it was him at home. And, uh, you know, my, my pastors that I used to be at church with gave a gift to my dad a long time ago of a Bible for me and my wife to give to him. We actually... We just, you know, over time, it just got stuffed away somewhere and we forgot about it. And it was during COVID that we recognized it and we brought it to him. And he read the Bible from beginning to end in one year period or right under a year's period during the COVID, right when COVID happened. And um, it helped him get closer to God. He was a he was a Catholic, you know, um, basic Catholic that I would say that most people are. But he got to read his Bible every single day. And he carved out a time where he read that word, where he read that scripture. And he got understanding from it, from reading it. And he got closer to God. And I believe at the end of his life, 
he experienced what the true peace of God was and how it is to spend time with God and walk with God. And it was a beautiful thing to behold. I wish my mother would have had the opportunity to see it, but I pray and believe that right now in glory, they get to see one another. And I don't know how it is necessarily in heaven, but from visions that I've had that I know God gave me these visions of heaven, there, there's definitely an understanding of who we were here and, um, and that, 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 that mutual understanding when we see one another in heaven and it's, it's that joy inside to see someone that you loved or that you knew while you were here on earth. And um, what I'm saying is we got to make the time like my dad made the time and he wasn't even someone who went to church or who was someone who was, you know, who was what I would call an evangelical or a Pentecostal. He was just a, he was just a regular Catholic and most Catholics don't even never read the Bible, you know, or ever go to church. They're just like, you go to try to talk to them about God. Oh, I'm Catholic. That's the only thing they know. You know, they don't know anything else, you know? So to have him read the word and read the scripture was a beautiful thing. And as Christians, even if we're not getting it right right now in our life and things are off, we can't quit reading. That's what the devil wants. The devil wants us to stop reading our word. The devil wants us to give up. The devil wants us to toss in the towel. The devil wants to say, I'm such a mess that I can't take the time to read this word because I'm so filthy that this, I'm not worthy of this word. That's the devil. That's not God. The words in the, in the, in the scripture or the good book, as my dad would say, are the things that's calling us closer to God. That's that's why the devil, the enemy, the demonic keeps us from it. They will do everything they can in the dark realm to keep us from that scripture. Because that scripture is what gives us healing. And it is, in it is the water that we drink from. It is the bread of life, like Jesus said. Don't eat just food. We Because we're going through hard times, we don't neglect our physical body food. We don't stop drinking water. We'll die. So we're killing our spiritual self when we don't read the word, when we don't pray. It doesn't matter how bad you messed up, you know, and sometimes you turn on the TV and sometimes, you know, when you watch your pastors, it depends. I know my church, my pastor, the current church that I go to, my pastor is a very gracious pastor. You know, he's he's extremely gracious with people. And it's a beautiful thing, you know, but not all pastors are graceful and gracious with people. And sometimes they shouldn't, honestly, because sometimes people are just playing games. And that's where that wisdom and the knowledge needs to come in and recognize if somebody is or isn't playing games or if they're just trying to get by by doing whatever they're doing and trying to fool somebody. So a pastor needs to use discernment as well. And so grace isn't always what's needed. It is important and is what needed a lot of times because people just need a little grace, you know, but sometimes people will take advantage of the situation. You need to be aware, but we need to read our Bible. We need to pray. You got to pray. Prayer is not, prayer is that thing where I've, I've taught myself where it's just like, if you just take a moment and say, dear God, hey, Jesus, there's, he's there. He said he's a friend. He's a counselor. He's the, he's the, he's, he's the wonderful news. He's the, he's the, he's, 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 he sticks closer than a brother, you know, he's father, Abba father, you know, so you can come to him with reverence or you can come to him just with complete brokenness, with despair. We can go to Jesus any way. It says, you know, we got to bring, our, you know, we could bring the worst of the worst to him, you know, in our worst state, when we come to him, it doesn't turn us away in our filth. He didn't turn us away. So in our struggle, do you think he's going to turn you away? You know, we're his sons and daughters. You know, when your son or your daughter is going through a difficult time and they're ashamed to come to you and you find out that they were struggling and didn't come to you, you're not like, oh, you should have never did that. You idiot, you fool. If you're doing that, you really need to seek, you know, God and check yourself on that. But when they come to you, you know, you're like, no, nah, I wish you would have came to me. It's okay. I love you. Look, I'm, you know, we're going to get through this together. I'm going to help you get through this, you know. But don't be so hard on yourself. You know, just what I'm saying is we can't neglect to call on Jesus's name. He's going to be there. He's on our side. He's for us. He's not against us. He's going to work with us through issues. You know, when we're struggling, he's going to take us through the path. When we're having difficult times, he's going to he's going to work with us. He's going to talk. He's going to shape us and mold us to where he needs us to be. You know, and just because you're struggling, going, it doesn't mean you're useless to the faith. 
You're still useful to the body. Whenever the, whenever the heart's going through issues and the doctor needs to go in there and repair the heart, we don't rip the heart out the body and say the heart's no longer needed because the heart's not doing good right now. You'll die without it. The rest of the body is useless without the heart. You know, there's a few organs that can be removed and you can live without. Heart ain't one. You know, yeah, you can cut your toe off, but you're going to struggle walking a little bit. It ain't going to feel right. You can rip your wisdom teeth out. You know what I mean? But you ain't going to look right if you rip these two front teeth out. It's a funny look. You know, you're going to want to get that fixed. You know, so, you know, when you when somebody's struggling, it don't mean they're 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 useless. You know, people, it just means they need some work. And so the doctor got to come in and fix it. The doctor got to come help. Maybe you got to take some medicine to get that heart right. You know, maybe you need to call on Jesus and open that scripture to get your mind right. Jesus loves us. And this is 2024. And there's a lot to accomplish today, next week, throughout the year. And as long as we're here on this earth, we still got breath. We still got purpose in the kingdom. And it doesn't matter. All body parts are necessary. When you get to heaven, just because you was a pastor of a church that had 8,000 people or you was on a, on a, on a, you know, you preached online and you reached every country in the world, that don't mean you're going to be, you know what I mean, better than somebody who was just a person who prayed for their neighbors. It's whatever God called. And when, I'm not saying that to, to down or say that the person who's, who's, who's has a, a great, um, a great, a great pastorship who's under a lot of people who's, who's really renowned and known. I'm not saying that they, God chose them for a reason. I'm saying that for the people who feel like they're less, you're not less. God got you for a purpose and your purpose just is important. I remember one time somebody was, I forgot where I heard it at, but it was a, it was a pastor talking. He said he, he, he had a vision of himself in heaven, you know, and he said when he was in heaven, he got to heaven, he got this beautiful crown and he said, his, he was looking at his crown. He's like, oh yeah, man. Oh man, this is, this is good. I know I did my, I did my work on him while I was, while I was on earth. And he, he really did. He was a, he was a pastor of a large congregation. He led a lot of people to the Lord. He was definitely influential. I believe he might've wrote some books. You know, he was he was he was influential in the faith and he and he did what God called him to do. And he was he was feeling good, head puffed up about it. And he remembered he's like, man, I know what I did, you know, and he remembers, and you know, he was seeing the saints and the, the saints of God from old in the, in the Bible. And he saw that he's like, oh, yeah, we're on the same thing. And he then he saw this lady. He said he saw this lady and her crown was like double the size of his and more shiny and more beautiful. And he was like, whoa. I wonder what she did. How many people did she reach? How many people did she impact? You know, she must have had a congregation that was amazing. She must have wrote so many books for the Lord. But the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, no, none of that. The only thing she did was pray for her son with intent, purpose, as we, God, Jesus, and Holy Spirit called her to do. She obeyed that one command and she did it with perfection. You see what I mean? So you don't know. It's whatever God called you to do. Her task on this earth was just to pray for her son and she did it well. And her crown represented that. God needs us to do something. And that, that prayer, I don't know about her son what it did, but it probably impacted him forever. Don't give up on yourself and don't give up on Jesus. Pick that Bible up and whisper those words, dear Jesus. He can hear you. It'll shift something. God loves us. And um, take a moment to like and subscribe. As we start our second year of Chief Center Ministry, me and my wife, we're looking to expand this channel and to grow on it. We're not discouraged and we're not giving up. We're pushing forward. We're fighting a good fight. We're staying in the race. So um, take a moment to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks.